We haven't seen cloud-based gaming take off. There's no Netflix of gaming yet. Does that change? I think the greatest disruptor to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years has been the combination of streaming plus subscription. It's changed the way we watch television, it's changed the way we listen to music, it's changed the way I read books. Um, the notion that it wouldn't impact our industry, uh, I think is naive. Um, will it take a little bit longer? Yes, for a whole bunch of reasons. File size, level of interactivity, um, you know, design. Whether you listen to you know, Led Zeppelin album on your phone or in your car or on your PC at home, it doesn't change. When we design a game that lives in a true streaming world, we have to think about screen size and session time. How does a Madden game that exists in the cloud manifest on your mobile phone one minute at a time? How does it manifest on your 60 inch TV an hour at a time? And how does it manifest on the dashboard of your car as you drive to work? It's a design challenge there. So we've got technology challenges with bandwidth and file size. We've got design challenges as you go from screen to screen, moment to moment gameplay. Um, but I do believe it will play an important part in our world in the future, the same way it does in music, movies, TV, books. Your competitors, Activision and Riot, are selling franchises to their games for tens of millions of dollars. What's EA's eSports strategy? We launched uh, our second year for Madden uh, Competitive Gaming. Uh, we were the first uh, partner of an official sports league where we got all teams and all players involved. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, we're going to second year of our FIFA um, competitive gaming and we've also announced that we have Battlefield competitive gaming coming. We saw exponential growth and engagement. Players who engaged uh, in our FIFA competitive modes engaged at three times the rate of people that didn't. Uh, and so we have maintained for some time, as did Riot in the early years, that competitive gaming is a way to engage a player base in the two greatest positive motivators of human behavior, social connection and competition. How big do you think esports are going to be? Human beings love to watch anything where the best in the world are doing it and the stakes are high. Um, take something that literally two and a half billion people do on the planet and you have a, an audience ready to engage. And what we're seeing now is the great players amongst that two and a half billion players are rising to the top and the stakes are high. When you watch our games being played, it's true entertainment and these are the best in the world doing it, and the stakes are high. So I think it's gonna be big. Rogue One did half the box office of The Force Awakens. Overall, Star Wars merchandise sales are slower than when Disney's first re reboot came out. Can your Star Wars Battlefront II game do as well as the first? What we have done is listen to our community. Um, what they said about our first Battlefront game that they bought a great many uh, units of was this is an amazing game but it needs to be bigger, it needs to be broader, it needs to be deeper, it needs a single player campaign, it needs space battles, it needs more complexity in player evolution inside the game. So we have built a game that's three times the size of the first one. Um, it is three times broader, three times deeper, it has space battles, it has a single player campaign. Uh, we are doing everything in our power to deliver to our you know, very, very large Star Wars community uh, the game they want. How do you think about the ability to potentially deepen your relationship with Disney? We've got a great relationship with Disney. Um, I think they have some wonderful IP and if there was an opportunity to, to do more with them, we would because they've been wonderful partners and I think we complement what they do. Um, and I think we, you know, if there's an opportunity to do that again, we would jump at the chance. Would there ever come a day when you don't release new titles on your franchises every year and just release online content? like? Take Two does with Grand Theft Auto? The short answer is yes. Mm. Um, there's, a, there's a few different things that's got to happen first. We do a lot in a FIFA game every year and a lot in a Madden game. There's a lot of code that we make available um, as part of the new iteration. But when we look at what we do in Korea or China, we don't do it that way. About every four years we release a new big code drop and we offer incremental change over time. So what we see you know, in Korea and China, what we see on mobile, I think there's a world where that might also uh, happen in other parts of our business. Apple has been pushing to become a bigger platform in games. It still hasn't happened. Do you think that will happen for Apple? The App Store is a pretty big business. 
Uh, and up until recently, games have been the lion's share of that business. What we're starting to see now is subscription services like Spotify and Netflix and Pandora and YouTube and Tidal rise to the top of the app charts. Um, and that's partly because Apple and others have come to understand that subscription is a really, really valuable way to engage with the consumer base. Valuable for the person providing the subscription and value for the subscriber. It is a friction-free way of ingesting large amounts of content. Um, and so I think that they are doing a great job. And I think that you will see games continue to be a big part of their app store. But what you might start to see is the business model around games change. Um, and we're getting ready for that. How, how is the business model going to change? Well, so if you think about, you know, free to play is a wonderful business model in mobile and it has allowed mobile um, to become, you know, as big as the console platforms in terms of overall game revenue. Um, but we are seeing a propensity for uh, app store users to engage in Netflix and Spotify and Tidal and Pandora um, and some random dating apps. Um, but, and they're doing that through subscription. And so we're looking at the business and saying, okay, is there a way we can offer great value to players through subscription and mobile? Um, and I don't think we're there yet, uh, but it's something that we're looking at.